Hello, everybody. Welcome to day ten of the narration challenge. My name is Edwin Tiong, aka Omadon, and I. And for today's book, I'm going to read "Dancing with Eternity" by John Patrick Lowry. Now, this is a book I'm not sure a lot of people know about, but for those who do know about it, it's uh, it's it's the book. You know, it's it's um. It's a science fiction book written by the sniper from Team Fortress 2. Well, the voice of the sniper from Team Fortress 2, basically. And it's, uh, I haven't actually cracked this open and read it properly yet. So, uh, reading, this will be my first time reading it. So that's interesting. This is one, another one of those books which I haven't read yet and just started reading it right now. Um, as to what it's about, your guess is as good as mine. So let's look, let's go to the blurb at the back and read it. End of 40th century, almost no one dies. What would happen if Odysseus met Captain, ha met Captain Ahab in the 40th century? Only Captain Ahab is a beautiful woman named Steele who owns her own starship, and Odysseus is an unemployed actor named Mohandas who's stuck on the backside of a backwater moon because he won't pay his taxes. And everybody, well, almost everybody, lives forever. A sprawling galactic odyssey! Steel, Moe, and the crew of the starship Light Dancer embark on an incredible voyage of adventure, self-discovery, and revelation! And they get to go on, and they get to go to a lot of really cool planets too. Hmm, sounds like a fun book, fun and humorous and sci-fi-ish. So let's uh, let's just flip through this and see where we stop. Um, oh man, it's gonna be spoilerific. I haven't read this at all. I'm gonna spoil myself in a future book. Maybe I should just stop someplace near the beginning, or near the middle, or near the end. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to be spoiled anyway. Uh, okay, let's let's do page this. <clears throat> page two hundred and forty-five. Oh God damn it! Starts in the middle of the sentence. I need to pick books which don't start in the middle of the sentence for at the start of every page. Oh well. Uh, well, we'll just go on with it. On which is which? There was what I could think... Sorry. There was what I think could only be described as an awkward pause. Then Louise said, Well, this con conversation certainly has become serious on a day that should be spent on rejoicing. I'm sure we can put aside our differences long enough for... We heard the front door open. Oh! Louise popped up. This, that will be John. Please, let me try to prepare him for this. It's going to be quite a shock. We nodded in agreement. John! She called out. Yeah! A gruff, ruined voice answered. John, there are some people here to see you. Who the hell would want to see me? Louise went out into the foyer. We could hear their voices through the archway. Through the archway. 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 Through the archway. Now, John, please watch your language. These... I don't have to watch my fucking language. Who gives a rat's ass what I say? Who the hell are these people? I don't even know who this character is. <laughs> I just saw he had a gruff, ruined voice. And now he sounds like this! Oh my god! Ah! Please, John, these are people from long ago. Long, long ago. John Cheatham strode angrily into the sitting room. What the hell do you people want, eh? Have not enough? You want to rip out my guts too? Fucking bias assholes! John, John, please! Louise implored. Don't you recognize them? This is Mrs. Drake, remember? Remember Mrs. Mrs. Drake? John Cheatham, or what was left of him, stood staring at the two femmes. A once handsome face was creased and weathered, and skin thin as paper. A white frost of stubble covered a strong jaw, but the teeth were worn and yellow. Blue eyes had faded almost, almost to gray, roomy and vague. A shock of unkempt white hair hung on his forehead. He was tall for an e an Edenite. He was tall for an Edenite, even old and collapsed as he was. He had once been a large man. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. He was tall for an Edenite, even old and collapsed as he was. He had been a large man once, but his frame now was gristle 
was now grisly, now was gris, grits, grisly. Grisly? Grisly and vacant? Grisly. G R I S T L Y. I don't think I'm familiar with that word. Hmm. Grisly and vacant. His clothes shone with ancient grime. He uttered just one word Estelle? No, dear, said Louise. I made the same mistake. Estelle? No, this is Alice, John. Alice, do you remember? This is your daughter. Alice. Louise led him over to her. Alice? Alice stood. Hi, Dad. Daddy? Hi. It's me. She started to hold her arms out to embrace him, stopped, started again. He looked down at her arms, uncomprehending, then back to her face, then back at her face. You look like... He croaked. And that's the end of the sentence. If you want to know more, you have to read the rest of the book, don't you? I don't even know what's going on. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm very confused. Okay. Okay, first pass. And now a second pass. <clears throat> On which is which? There was what I could think... Uh, what I think could only be... Damn it. There was what I think could only be described as an awkward pause. Who's the I in here? I thought this. Uh, I thought the narration was um, omniscient third person, but I guess no. Yes. No. 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 I guess not. All right. Okay. Keep going. An awkward pause. Then Louise said, "Well, this conversation certainly has become serious on a day that should be spent in rejoicing. I'm sure we can put aside our differences long enough for." We heard the front door open. Oh, Louise hopped up. That will be John. Please, let me try to prepare him for this. It's going to be quite a shock. We nodded in agreement. John, she called out. Yeah, a gruff, ruined voice answered. John, there's some people here to see you. Who the hell would want to see me? Louise went out into the foyer. Louise went out into the foyer. We could hear their voices through the archway. Now, John, please, watch your language. These... I don't have to watch my fucking language. Who gives a rat ass what I say? Who the hell are these people? Please, John, these are people from long ago. Long, long ago. John Cheatham strode angrily into the sitting room. What the hell do you people want, huh? Haven't I enough? You want to rip out my guts too? Fucking pious assholes. John, John, please, Louise implored. Don't you recognize them? This is Mrs. Drake, remember? Remember Mrs. Drake? John Cheatham, or, or, or what was left of him, stood staring at the two femmes. A once handsome face was creased and weathered, the skin thin as paper. A white frost of stubble covered a, a, white frost of stubble covered a strong jaw, but the teeth were worn and yellow. Blue eyes had faded almost to gray, roomy and vague. A shock of unkempt white hair hung over his forehead. He was tall for an Edenite, even old and collapsed as he was. He had been a large man once, but his frame was now grisly. But his frame now was grisly and vacant. His clothes shone with ancient grief. His clothes shone with ancient grime. He uttered what he uttered just one word. Estelle. No, dear, said Louise. I made this I made the same mistake. Estelle. No, this is Alice, John. Alice. Do you remember? This is your daughter, Alice. Louise led him over to her. Alice? Alice stood. Hi, Dad. Daddy? Hi, it's me. She started to hold her arms out to embrace him. Stopped. Started again. He looked down at her arms, uncomprehending. He looked down at her arms, uncomprehending, then back at her face. You look like... He croaked. And that was the second pass. Ugh. Now we're going to have to go for a third pass on this. Um, yeah. No. Certain word choices cause confusion in me because I just, I just think, oh, well, if you're going to use that word, then it's obviously going to lead to this word that I think would be best, and it doesn't lead to that word at all. It leads to another word, which sort of just 
deadens the 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 lyricism the lyricism of the words. I just I don't, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I just think certain words just go well together, while others just sort of fall flat and just just roll around. Most of this is okay, and I can read it, but I don't know. 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 Is it just me and my weaknesses in、uh, narration, or is it just the word choices aren't that inspiring? I I I don't know. It's probably just me. Okay, so third pass. <clears throat> On which is which? There was what I think could only be described. Damn it! Now、uh, let's try the third pass again from the beginning. On which is which? There was what I think. What I think. What I think could only be described as the awkward past. God damn it! I wish I would just stop doing that, just skipping the end of words. But no, no, Edwin, that's just something that you do. You just like skipping the end of words. So it all sounds like this. Pudding. Okay. <clears throat> On which is which? There was what I think could only be described as an awkward pause. Then Louise said, "Well, this conversation certainly has become serious. On a day that should be re- on a day that should be spent in rejoicing, I'm sure we can put aside our differences long enough for." We heard the front door open. Oh, Louise hopped up. That will be John. Please let me try to prepare him for this. It's going to be quite a shock. We nodded in agreement. John, she called out. Yeah. A gruff, ruined voice answered, "John, there are some people here to see you. Who the hell would want to see me?" Louise went out into the foyer. Louise went out into the foyer. We could hear their voices through the archway. Now, John, please watch your language. These. I don't have to watch my fucking language. Who gives a rat's ass what I say? Who the hell are these people? Please, John. These are people from long ago. Long. Long ago, John Sheetham strode angrily into the sitting room. What the hell do you people want, huh? Haven't had enough? You want to rip out my guts too? Fucking bias assholes! John, John, please! Louise implored. Don't you recognize them? This is Mrs. Drake. Remember? Remember Mrs. Drake? John Sheetham, or what was left of him, stood staring at the two femmes. A once handsome face was creased and weathered, the skin thin as paper. A white frost of stubble covered a strong jaw, but the teeth were worn and yellow. Blue eyes had faded almost to grey, rheumy and vague. A shock of unkempt white hair hung over his forehead. He was tall for an Edenite, even old and collapsed as he was. He had been a large man once, but his frame now was gristly and vacant. His clothes shone with ancient grime. He uttered just one word, Estelle. No, dear," said Louise. "I made the same mistake." Estelle. No, this is Alice, John. Alice. Do you remember? This is your daughter, Alice. Louise led him over to her. Alice. Alice stood. Hi, Dad. Daddy. Hi. It's me. She started to hold her arms out to embrace him. Stopped. Started again. He looked down at her arms, uncomprehending, then backed at her face. God damn it! I was about to say back to her face, then back at her face. You look like. He croaked. And I think that will do. Um. Hmm. Not too happy with how this narration is.、Uh, almost at the end of the second week, and I still sound okay sometimes, but other times, very specific other times, I just keep getting it wrong. Over, getting it wrong, wrong. There's a G, not Ron. Getting it wrong over and over again. Guess I just keep skipping the end. Of letters, words. Anyway, 
Day 10 has ended. Day 11 will begin tomorrow.